that uh, makes East Lansing special is the fact of uh, you know the loss we had two years ago over there in the playoffs and we finished 10-1 and the great atmosphere and it was a great game against you know a great team that they had and, and then last year following up with a pretty much a defensive struggle I think both teams really struggling off. Pitts and Calvary are going to be two big players we're probably going to key up a bunch this time. Calvary's great running back you know hopefully we'll just contain them in the middle and then our, our line's going to fill it up. Linebackers are going to do their job and stump that. Good. Get a lot of sacks. The East Lansing football game is a big rivalry because this is our third time playing them, and we still haven't beaten them yet. But we haven't. We've always been in the game, and they're very big. They're a pretty big uh, football school. They always have good teams, good athletes. You know the proximity of uh, being next to East Lansing and uh, you know, what the program has meant over the years, and obviously it's a big game. And usually, whoever has better fundamentals, uh, especially for game one, I think has the best chance of success Friday. Hold Okay. Same group, go again. Kicker, you got to have your head in front. Hold Hut. Head in front, drive. Good. That's it. you got to talk. Don't assume your tight end knows. Don't ever assume he knows. and all that stuff. Now it's reward time. Now you get to get rewarded. Don't forget you. Yell on three. One, two, three. Yell! Linebackers, I need you for five minutes, maybe. Hello, I'm Greg Kerner, and welcome to exciting CAAC High School Football. Tonight's game features the Hazlitt Vikings, and the East Lansing Trojans. The East Lansing shot. You got it, it. It's going to be touched there by Ben Conroy. Recovered by East Lansing Trojans. East Lansing football. Got the Hazlitt 25 yard line. Terrible play there by the Vikings. Unfortunately, not able to come up with that. Uh, a bit of confusion there, but uh, nonetheless, he was touched by uh, number 17, Ben Conroy, and it's going to go over to the two Trojans. That's a good position here for the Trojans. Looking to set their defense. Picks for the Trojans under center. Here's going to be a handoff to number 8, Marcus Calvary, up the middle. Stopped there by a host of Viking captains. 
He slants and kicks the field goal. The kick is up, and it is good. That makes the score. He slants in nine, has it zero. Stop you all, you stopped yourself last time. Let's go! Vikings come here on the blitz. There's gonna be number 27, Brian McIntosh tackles Gene Pitts in the backfield for the set. will kick off to begin the second half. Here's the kick. It's going to be a squib picked up by the Vikings. Going to be uh, he's going to pick up a, a couple yards there, and he's going to be stopped. Here's the handoff. No, he's, he's going to take it himself around the corner here. He's got a block right there. He's going to be tackled and, uh, by number five of the Trojans. He's going to be getting a first down there for the Vikings. Big third down here for the Trojans. Here's the pass. It's going to be completed to East Lansing Trojans for the first down. First down, East Lansing.
Anderson. Going to hand the ball up, up the middle to Jordan Montgomery. He's in for the score. Touchdown, Vikings. here on defense down by seven. The handoff to Calvary. He's gonna be stopped and short of the first down. You like it yet? I don't know about that yet. I don't okay. know yet. How about, how about now, this, they're probably gonna be in a 5-3, so seven dig seven versus the 787, yes? Yeah. 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 Vikings here. Peterson will go under center. Calls the play. Here's, they're going to pass to, uh, oh, that ball's going to be tipped around. Yeah. Caught by Adam Bill Harrison. First down, Vikings. So we passing situation here for the Vikings. Peterson drops back. That ball's tipped and intercepted. And by the Trojans, and they're going to go all the way down for the score. That's going to do it for the Vikings here. Disappointing loss. Still cannot the beat those Trojans of East Lansing. Again, the Vikings face the Trojans and cannot come up with a victory. It's a fourth straight loss for the Trojans for the Vikings. It's going to do it for us here, folks. Drive home safely. Trojans win. Trojans win. Kick at number 32, Nick Trago. There's the kick. It's going to be a low flyer, and it's going to bounce off a Hazlitt player, and the Hazlitt will take over on the 45-yard line. As usual, the Austin Shaw 
A shot of Matt Peterson getting the play from Tokyo. Peterson hands the ball off. He's going to pass. Excuse me. Going to get a touchdown for the Vikings. Pass to the corner of the end zone. Excellent, excellent play there by the Vikings. Not be important. Yes, not. Yeah, I mean, this one, take a little drink there. 40 yards to go with a minute 24. They think the ball is going to be awful hard to go inside. We're going to field goal here to go into halftime up 17 14. That's going to be the end of the first half. With the Vikings 14, the Panthers 14. The Vikings with the lead, or excuse me, the game is tied 14 14. He's going to be, Montgomery's is good. The kick is up. And it is good. The Vikings take the lead, 17-14. Yeah, Peter, actually, check that. That's going to be, Glee Masters going to be sacked for a loss there. Three, Blake gonna, Waldron. going to be sacked for a loss. Number three, Blake Waldron making the scene from their own 10-yard line for the Panthers. Like he's going to take a timeout here. Looks like they didn't have the right personnel on the field. Both uh, made it difficult to stop. Split the B right up the middle. They hand off the wider again. To the left, he spins. Makes a couple men miss, and he's going to be down to about the 10-yard line for a first down for the Vikings. So here comes number three out of the game for the Vikings, Blake Walker. We're uh, back into the beer wall. Uh, beer option type of look here. Comes. Yeah. An option play again, a pass actually to a wide open John Markey. Good play call there by uh, the Panthers to get the first down. Right. Good play right here. Here's the center, wing right. So it's going to be a pass right. play. Peterson's going to throw the ball to an open. And Mark Harrison in the end zone. Touchdown, the Vikings. What a great play there by the Vikings. About a 30 14 for your. Uh, Hometown Vikings here. Yeah. Uh, 705 left in the pool. Here's a pass right here. Looks like Remesh is going to run with the ball. He's going to get a couple blocks. He's going to be pushed out of bounds by number 27, Brian McIntosh. He's got enough for a first down here. Looks like uh, Remesh in the gun again. He's going to throw the ball. Connects with Markey. Markey, he's going to be down. Oh, he's going to be the into touchdown. the end zone. Touchdown, Panthers. Panthers. So it does get to that point. That puts the uh, Vikings in Second Panthers territory six. on the uh, 46. Well, okay, working about two. I wouldn't be surprised to see him. To see, yep, here the Vikings are going to go for it here. This is the most important play of the game from this point forward right here, guys. Here they go. Peterson under center. Here's the handoff. Panthers are in the backfield. Panthers will take over on the Hazlitt 46 yard line. They're all over that one. Ryan Widener tried to fight, Ryan stay Weidner. up. Farthest alignment out next to the tight end. Remaster again. The pass, he's hit. It's flood. Flood's going to be brought down by number uh, 14, James Wilcock. First down, though, for the Panthers. Remaster in the gun. He's going to be passing. He steps up in the pocket. He's got lots of room to run. He's going to cut it back up. He's hit from behind by uh, it's like number uh, six, Adam Barteris is behind here. He's going to throw the ball. He's going to go deep. He's going to be caught there by number, looks like number eight. Excuse that, check that number nine, Paul Police. Ball again. Fourth and one from the one. He cash this one in and score. Flea match is going to run around the outside. He's in for the score. 53.3 seconds remaining. Great heads up play there by Lee Master. Great run there. Holds on to it. Tucks in. Right? Tucks it in. Thanks, folks. Lightning will win. Hard fought. Amazing game tonight. Lightning will win. 31-28. That's going to do it, folks. I think we may have to run one more play here. Doesn't look like it. That's going to do it. The number 14 in Division 4 falls. One and one Viking, 31 to 28 here at Viking Stadium. Amazing game, both ways for both teams.
Travel so hard. Travel so hard. Don't nobody know my trouble with God. Don't nobody know my trouble with God. I just said I think the, mo the most um, selfless, team-oriented movement that I've seen this year out of, a, out of a player has been Matt Peterson and the way he's dealt with uh, not being the starter at quarterback anymore. And as painful as I know that was, as tough, maybe even as angry as he probably was to some degree, um, he's handled it like a champ, like nothing I could have ever imagined uh, myself being able to do even. Uh, you know, as an adult, I just think he was 
a man about it. He wanted the team to be first before his feelings, and and uh, it's just been a great move. I think it's gelled the team the way he's responded to it. You know, he's gone over, had a good time playing some defense, and uh, you know, that's got to be a hard, hard situation for he and his family. But he's just been an absolute man and champ about it, and I couldn't be more proud of him. Oh, the environment, you know, tomorrow night obviously is going to be a little different than the JV game, but uh, I know he'll be well prepared. He mentioned that he's been looking forward to this for a long time. It just happened earlier than what, you know, he expected, but uh, he, he doesn't have to be the man tomorrow night. He just has to be a key player in the, in the, in the, in the uh, cog of the offense, and so he'll do a great job. Nate Turner, what do you mean to the team? Oh, he means a lot. The kid, he's just a pure athlete. He knows how to throw, knows how to run, knows how to lead, especially. We love you, Nate. Nathan Turner. Nathaniel Turner is a pretty good little athlete, awfully good little athlete. Uh, I don't think the nerves thing will bother him maybe as much as some people would think because they think he's been around some big games before and played in, in settings. He's been around uh, intense settings as a, as a younger kid when he was the water boy for the varsity and ran, went on that Silver Dome run with us and uh, kind of knows that atmosphere. And I think he's uh, probably looking forward to this more than he is worried about it. So I think he'll do just fine tomorrow. Uh, tonight, Nate's uh, against Williamson. Nate Turner, first starter, sophomore in varsity. Uh, I don't know, it's going to be a little different. The speed's probably going to be a little bit faster for him. Uh, he had a tough game against Fowlerville, which I think probably helped him out coming into tonight. Um, I think Nate's going to do fine. I mean, he can do a lot of things I can't do. He's a lot faster than I am, so he's a, he's a good football player. He's got a good cast surrounding him, too. So Widener is running back and Isaiah at the center. Um, McIntosh, the other one, he's got, he's going to have linemen to protect him. He's got running backs that are going to help him out. So he doesn't have to do everything, but I think he's going to do, he's, he'll be fine tonight. I have to say the, well, I haven't. have to apologize. Well, tonight I'll probably find out, but you tomorrow. <laughs> the speed, like, offense is a little bit faster, but it's kind of like the same. So it's still, both of them are fun and support both of them. everybody there. If you drive already, well then you're all set. Okay. Right. Last thing is this, okay? You better be ready to play tomorrow. 
Why don't we cheer? Reverend. Yeah! Dutchman. Woo! Sagman. 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 Shut up. Hey, hey, hey. There's no game as big as tomorrow, man. We don't win. We don't move on, fellas. What we did this season doesn't matter. We're playing one game at a time. Don't psych yourself out either. Like, no. hey, don't, don't just play like, scared, get so fellas. scared because you might be your last game. Just play your hardest. Hey, we play this game ball. Too. Broke That's a B on ball. my hand. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we play this game to have fun. Just go out and have fun. If you have fun, we will win. Play with emotion, we'll win. No problem at all, guys. Stay champs on three. Get more points. Stay champs on three. One, two, three. Five push ups. Playoff atmosphere around here in comparison to the regular season atmosphere, honestly, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of difference in it. And I mean that in a, in a positive kind of way. I think that this community rallies around the football team, whether, you know, whether it's game one, game five, or game 12. And, uh, you know, there'll be 5,000 people, people in the stands uh, tomorrow night, just like there would be, you know, if we were playing Lansing Eastern in week two. And that's just such a neat thing. And it's a, it's, it's a joy and a privilege to coach in that system because, it, you know, there are not very many fair weather fans. There's a, just, you know, they live and die with their Vikings. And This game's pretty exciting because we thought our last game was going to be on homecoming a while ago, and now we got lucky and we get we our first change. playoff game at home. <coughs> so that'll be really fun. It's going to be pretty hostile. I don't know. Battle Creek's going to bring a lot of people out here tonight, I guess. But I think our student section's going to hold it off. A lot of people are going to come with costumes, I bet. So it'll be a pretty fun night. Expect a W from us. Okay, some of the things that you need to keep in mind, remember, okay, we talked about turnovers and penalties. Each week, remember that about <coughs> understanding how important those things are, okay? We don't have four officials from Battle Creek Lake to referee the game, okay? We've got good officials. We're going to talk to you. Make sure you don't do anything stupid. You know what I'm talking about. If we break a long one, do not throw a block behind the play. I don't care if it's legal, it's front. <coughs>
Turner is set for a loss of 10. The ball goes over on downs to Lakeview. by Woodson. It'll be first and ten for Lakeview from their own 38-yard line. Not because 
because of the lack of effort, I can tell you that in terms of how you respond to something. Show, show what kind of character we have. I'm going to respond to second half. I think it's going to be fun. Made some plays on their drive after we scored. Okay, no questions. You have to give credit, but it still hurts. We're not about just making the play. We're not about just being as this expectation that we place on ourselves here. Not anybody else. It's the expectation that we place on ourselves as coaches and as players on this team this program all the way down to the front. Everybody wants to be elated in five weeks. People in here make some huge commitments in terms of where we expect to play, where we want to play, make it a job, how much we play. Those are the kids with no problem. Uh, John Piper did a great job stepping up in, in, in an adverse situation. Do a good job, Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. You can see very much playing time all year as a senior. Worked hard. Never, never, never complained, never bitched. I'm sure you're hurt. I'm sure it was frustrating. Because you never know when your, your time's going to come. And it happened to come tonight. And he was ready. And I think he played, I think he played well. remember some of the negative things from tonight. So remember the positive. Because that's what you're going to remember seniors 15 years and 20 years. You get to be our age. A lot of guys our age, we didn't have to just manage that out. One loss and you were out. I never got to experience it. Day one, senior year. Never got to experience it. So yeah, it's special, and you need to remember the good things about it. <laughs> and the things that hurt teach you some things too. Sometimes it's hard to figure out what they are, especially right now. It sucks. <laughs> but, and, yeah. And, uh, kind of, kind of, kind of rearrange what the coach do is as possible. Uh, talk about up there. Be positive. Be positive to each other. I'm proud of the fact of watching people coming in and how you're handling how, you, how you're handling it. I don't know what to say, really. Three minutes to the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. Either we heal as a team or we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, till we're finished. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Believe me. And we can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell. One inch at a time. Now, I can't do it for you. I'm too old. I look around, I see these young faces and I think I mean I made every wrong choice a middle-aged man can make I uh, 
I pissed away all my money, believe it or not. I chased off anyone who's ever loved me. And lately, I can't even stand the face I see in a mirror. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from you. I mean, that's, that's, that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. You find out life's this game of inches. So is football. Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. <laughs> On this team, we fight for that inch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw with our fingernails for that inch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the difference between winning and losing. Between living and dying. I'll tell you this, in any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's gonna win that itch. And I know if I'm gonna have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that itch. Because that's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Now I can't make you do it. You gotta look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now I think you're gonna see a guy who will go that inch with you. Hell yeah. You're gonna see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're gonna do the same for him. Yeah. That's the team, gentlemen. And either we heal now as a team yeah. or we will die as individuals. That's football, guys. That's all it is. Now, what are you gonna do? I think one of the things that, that we need to guard against is, you know, is that we set the bar extremely high, you know, for our program, and, and we and we, you know, we every year we talk about being league champions and nine and zero and going on, and, you know, back to the Silver Dome and winning at this time, and and if we fall short of that, I think one of the things that we need to guard against is being too too critical of, of that particular team or that particular group of athletes, and you know, we're disappointed how we played in the first round of the playoffs, and I think we were a better football team than than Lakeview, but we didn't, you know, but we didn't show it that night. For a variety of reasons, but I think we need to guard against that. And then you know, you look at the big wins we had, you know, against Arch Rival Dewitt. We played well over at Grand Rapids Union, you know, on a Saturday night and played well. Played well at Belding. Um, I think there's some, you know, those games stand out in my mind. And I think we need to keep things in perspective. I think we're, you know, if we look at it, you know, we're spoiled as a coaching staff. We're spoiled as a as a program. We're spoiled as a community. I think we, you know, we take things for granted sometimes, and I think we got to keep things in perspective. And seven and two, uh, for some people, is a fantastic year. It may not be what we wanted, may not be in terms of attaining our goals, but I think it's important for the seniors that 
and others that, that we look at and, and uh, that we did accomplish a great deal of things and maybe it didn't end the way we want but uh, in the end I think in retrospect you got to look back and you got to have some positive vibe and uh, you know there has to be some acceptance at, at this point and you have to uh, look at the, the positive things and look what uh, we didn't do well and try to improve on that for those underclassmen and, uh, but all in all I thought it was a very very solid performance this year and and I think the seniors look back and, you know, and they did win some big games. Here we go one. Two and three.